Hi class, this is Dr. Rob Flowers. One of the things that makes this an excellent graduate course is it provides both concepts and tools. I want you to spend your time learning about the essential concepts, systems analysis, requirements analysis, project management, UML, ERDs. I don't want you to spend a lot of time struggling to create graphics. Graduate students have varying degrees of knowledge about systems analysis and its tools. Some use systems analysis tools at work. Others have taken a requirements engineering course. And many of you haven't used either ever. So let's level set. Visio provides most of the basic stencils that have the shapes you need already built in. The first thing you do when you're going to create a new model is you're going to go through the textbook, the Shapiro Library, the UML 2.5 standard to understand what it is the model you're trying to create is all about. What does it need to contain? What are the basic shapes, the associations between those shapes? Once you understand the conceptual element of the model, the next thing you want to do is go into Visio, and that's what this video is all about. You're going to type in three little letters that are going to save you a bunch of time. UML, which as you know stands for the Unified Modeling Language. Some of these shapes uh, you already know, or some of these stencils you already know. You already know use cases. If you don't, you're going to learn a little bit more about it in this video. You know the state transition diagram, which Visio calls the UML state machine. Let's launch the UML use case. We're going to create a use case diagram here. We're going to select the choice with the green system boundary, what the UML 2.5 standard calls the subject, and we're going to create it in US units. You see most of what you need is already there. You can start by deleting what you don't need. But I think it's far better rather than starting with this, because you might end up with some things in there that you don't need or understand, I think it's better to start from a clean slate. So let's do that. We're going to start with what the standard calls a, sub, uh, a subject and what Visio calls a subsystem. We're going to call this Blackboard. Make it a little bigger. And then we're going to ask ourselves, what in the world does Blackboard do? Well, we know that it does a lot of things, but just to keep this video nice and short and simple, let's just talk about three things. We know one thing it does is it accepts assignments. Grab dragging another use case here. The other thing it does is it presents those assignments. And then it presents grades. Now, we've got the basic elements of the black box that just happens to be called Blackboard. But we're not talking about how it's done. We're just talking about what services it provides. Now we're going to provide some users who actually leverage the system. And conveniently, each one of those is associated. That's why we call the next element an association with the use case. We know the first is you, the student, the professor, and the advisor. So we'll add an association here between the student and the accepts assignment because the student is going to submit a paper. Then we're going to simply copy this, paste it, and relabel it. This professor grades assignments. Actually grades the paper. Let's just keep it simple. And we're going to paste the association in one more time and make the connection between the presenting of assignments and the advisor who is going to check the 
progress. And there you have it. It's not all that sophisticated. There's not a lot that goes on here, but if you were talking to someone who's never used Blackboard before, this would do a pretty good job of describing who uses it, what they do with it, and what it is that Blackboard gives the users of the system as far as functionality is concerned. So that's it. You don't have to reinvent the wheel to create models that conform to the UML spec. I do check for conformance to the uniform modeling language specification and other um, modeling standards that we use in the course, but that doesn't mean it's hard for you to conform to those standards. Microsoft has already done most of the hard work for you. So now you see just how easy it is to save time and create a high quality UML model.